Hello and welcome to the 10th seminar. Today we are going to talk about how to enrich for uranium-235, the uranium isotope that everybody is dying to get their hands on for nuclear weapons or nuclear energy. So if you look at natural uranium, you will find that 99.3% is the boring uranium-238 isotope. Only about 0.7% is the exciting uranium-235 isotope. Of course, there is some natural occurring uranium-234, which just is a decay product of the uranium-238. Um, if you look at uranium, uh, you won't find it as a metal in nature, but you will find it in the form of an ore. There are more than 100 known uranium ores. Most of them contain about 0.1 to 1% of uranium by weight. What you first have to do is what's called physical enrichment. So you want to have as much uranium and as little rock as possible because uranium ore is well mostly just rock and you want to get rid of all of this rock and have only the type of rock that contains the most uranium by weight and for that you use for example grinding or flotation flotation works because uranium is very dense so anything that contains a lot of uranium has a higher density than stuff that doesn't contain as much of uranium or you can just sort them by using a geiger counter and everything that is the most active contains the most uranium content. So the uranium normally is in the form of U3O8, triuranium octoxide. This is a mixed valence uranium compound where you have uranium in the oxidation state plus four and in the oxidation state plus six. Other types, for example, autonite, um, it contains the uranium in the oxidation state just plus six. But sometimes, for example, pitch blender, which is mostly uranium dioxide, contains the uranium in the oxidation state plus four. This is what pure triuranium octoxide looks like. It's just a black powder. And when you're done with the physical enrichment, you now have about five to 30% uranium by weight, but it's still in the form of rock. So you want to dissolve all of the uranium and work with a mostly aqueous solution. For that, you use um, sulfuric acid in combination with an oxidizing agent, for example, manganese dioxide, um, in order to oxidize all of the uranium in the oxidation state plus four to the oxidation state plus six. And if you have the uranium in the oxidation state plus six, you can then further proceed with more chemical processing. Okay, it looks something like this. I simplified it. Of course, there are many different reactions, but if you look at some uranium in the oxidation state plus six, it will get dissolved and form uranyl ions. And these uranyl ions will form an anionic, so a negative complex with the sulfate ions. You can also um, treat it with soda for carbonato complexes, but what you want is negatively charged uranium complexes because after that, is most commonly known is the anion exchange chromatography. An ion exchanger is a column um, that has ion exchanger on it and these can hold certain complex ions. In this case you will have complex anions. This is what a column looks like and it's filled with all of these beads of ion exchanger and yeah you uh, they look something like this so it's a polymer with acid groups on it uh, used here is a cation exchanger where you exchange ammonium ions for protons from the acid groups but you can also use an ion exchanger for example here so you will put all of your acid solution onto this an ion exchanger and this an ion exchanger will only hold the complex ions which is the uranium all of the other positively charged ions, like all of these transition metals, most of them uh, will just be flushed out. And once you have the urinal in this ion exchanger, you can then separately wash it out with ammonium nitrate solution in nitric acid. Then you will have a aqueous solution with a very high uranium content, but to further get even more pure uranium, you will then do a precipitation reaction with ammonium hydroxide solution to precipitate the uranyl ions as ammonium diurinate shortened to ADU. Okay, and then you, of course, this is just one example of many steps that you can do 
to get the uranium out of the rock in a pure form as possible. One step is to, well, bake the yellow cake, which is the most common um, purification step. Um, from this, either you have uh, the ammonium diurinate, which I talked about on the previous slide, or you can have the urinal nitrate hexahydrate, which is um, also a quite common type of urinal compound. And this is just heated to 350 degrees C. Um, ammonium diurinate looks like this. It's a yellowish orangish powder and the Urine and nitrate hexahydrate looks like this. So why do we heat it? We heat it to get rid of the nitrogen because the nitrogen will gas out in the form of ammonia gas. And what you will end up with is just mostly pure uranium trioxide, just a yellowish powder. And then you can further proceed with more chemical processing. You would want to reduce it. The number of ways that you can reduce the uranium in the oxidation state plus six to plus four they are countless, but hydrogen, it's just the cleanest way as there are no other ions that you will introduce to your mixture. And after that, you will um, hydrofluorinate. So with HF, which is really nasty stuff. Yeah, this is the green, uh, the green salt, the uranium tetrafluoride. And you want to make uranium hexafluoride, which is a colorless solid that um, sublimates at just 56 degrees C. But for that, you would need quite nasty compounds, fluorine or chlorine trifluoride, which obviously something that and this is the route that Cody's lab also showed because all of this information this is nothing um classified documents this is just openly available yeah and he did the uranium metal route and for the enrichment you would need uh, fluorine and fluorine is very hard to get but if you have fluorine gas uh, you can make the uranium hexafluoride which i will show how to do in the far future and why would you want to have uranium hexafluoride as you would need quite nasty compounds to get it because there is no chemical way to separate different isotopes as the uranium isotope 238 and the uranium 235 they are chemically so similar that there is no process to practically differentiate between both you can differentiate between hydrogen and deuterium but by electrolysis but not these two isotopes they are just he too heavy and what you do in enrichment is you use the different behavior of differently heavy gases so you need a gaseous compound and uranium hexafluoride is the only known compound that you would get into the gas phase at moderate temperatures without it decomposing into different other stuff. And you will also need something where only the uranium isotope determines the molecular mass, therefore determining the mass of the whole gas. And uranium hexafluoride is just that. Because if you were to look at uranium hexachloride, let's say it is a gas or it can be made into the gas phase, um, not possible, but let's say it was possible. You have one problem because if you use uranium hexachloride, there is a 75% chance of having the chlorine 35 isotope, but there's also a 25% chance of it being the chlorine 37 isotope. So if you were to have a uranium hexachloride molecule with the uranium 235 in it, and two of these six chlorine atoms would be the chlorine 37, um, they would be heavier than a uranium hexachloride, which contains the uranium 238. So you can't differentiate between a uranium hexachloride that contains the uranium 235 or the uranium 238. Therefore, you will need fluorine because fluorine is one among few elements that only occurs naturally as one isotope, the fluorine 19. So the whole molecular mass is determined um, by the uranium isotope. And once you have the uranium hexafluoride, you can use ultra centrifuges in order to separate the uranium 238 from the uranium 235. Um, this is a schematic on how they work. So you have your mixed uranium hexafluoride and the light uranium 235 will stay in the middle and the heavier uranium 238 um, can then be separated out. And this is what you will then later use in another centrifuge and so on and so on. And then you would have to further proceed with the enrichment in order to get to your desired um, enrichment grade. The separation factor is about 1.2. To five, so not quite high, it's about 25% in that case. So if you put in natural 0.7% uranium-235 in one centrifuge, um, you will have this gas having a uranium-235 content of 0.875%, so not that much, and go on and so on. But only assuming that the um, gas is at a temperature of 25 degrees C, 
The centrifuge has a diameter of 20 centimeters and it spins at around 300 meters per second. A brief introduction on how to enrich for uranium. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.